The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Strauss here with realagriculture.com. I'm back here today with another Wheat School episode and I have here with me Adam Fast who's a master's student with the University of Alberta. How's it going today? Pretty good Kara, how about you? Good, so we are here today at Wheatstock to talk about some of the research you've been doing with enhanced efficiency fertilizers. Do you want to kind of elaborate on that? Yeah, for sure. So my master's research is looking at different enhanced efficiency fertilizers applied at different nitrogen rates uh, in a relatively new cultivar of spring wheat in Western Canada, AAC Viewfield. And uh, I'm really looking at the agronomic side of it and seeing if we can improve yield parameters for farmers. So you kind of looked at two different studies. Do you want to talk sure. about uh, each of those studies? Yeah, for sure. So the study that we're in right now, 313, it's N rates and different N forms. So we're having six different enhanced efficiency fertilizers with urea as well. And uh, these are applied at four different end rates, 60, 120, 180, and 240 kilograms per hectare. And then the other study, 314, it's looking at two different cultivars, uh, AAC Viewfield and Stettler, with five of these nitrification or enhanced efficiency fertilizers at uh, three different placement and timings. So with that study, it's uh, all side banded or split applied between side banded FIX 4 and FIX 10, or uh, side banded and FIX 10. And, and what are some of the results you guys have seen so far? Well, well what, we're, what we're seeing so far is it's very variable between the different site years. This is across six different locations in Western Canada. And that has kind of changed uh, over the last few years as Alberta Ag has changed. And um, what, what we're seeing is overall, you know, urea is, is pretty tough to beat with the, with the spring wheat. We are seeing in quite a few site years um, increases in yield and protein with the use of a nitrification inhibitor. So that would be typically super U, which also is a dual inhibitor and has the urease inhibitor in it, but as well as Entrench, which is solely uh, a nitrification inhibitor and the active ingredient that's nitropyrin. How have you found, I mean, you're looking across Western Canada and this year specifically, like we're seeing huge amounts of variability when it comes yeah. to moisture levels. How does that play into EEFs? You know, it, it's, it just, I think it makes a grower need to be cognizant that every year is different and no two years are the same so if you you know you have you're in the black soils and you get a lot of rain you know you maybe you're probably more prone to denitrification loss in the soil where a nitrification inhibitor is your best bet to to help preserve the nitrogen that you apply but that could easily change especially like last year you know there was a drought basically across everywhere um, but I think the variability in uh, in the fu in the future of the environments that we that we're in, it, it just causes a grower to need to think. You know, there's got to be a way that I can protect my nitrogen so that my plants get the most nitrogen. That's going to increase yield or protein or biomass or whatever they're trying to achieve. So just got to be cognizant that there's ways that we can protect our nitrogen that we apply. So if a producer is looking at uh, using an EEF for the first time, what's kind of your number one messaging? So the the number one uh, EEF in Canada and the States is ESN, which is a polymer coated urea. So um, I, like I just mentioned, nitrification or urease inhibitors, ESN is a totally different thing. It's, it just slowly releases that soluble nitrogen of a urea granule over the course of a growing season, uh, cued with moisture and more dependently temperature. As it increases, the, the granule will release the soluble N and then in theory, the plant will uptake that better throughout the growing season because uh, as we all know wheat the nitrogen uptake is sigmoidal so it doesn't take all its nitrogen at once it's 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 spread throughout the season but there's definitely an accelerated nitrogen uptake phase um so esn is a classic is a classic enhanced efficiency fertilizer to use but in terms of an inhibitor package it's hard to beat and you really can't with what we what we've seen and other research from dr brian bears in winter wheat is is super U. It, uh, it's a dual inhibitor product. It has DCD as a nitrification inhibitor and NBPT as a urease inhibitor. And that's just a great all around package basically for any, any method or any uh, fashion that you're applying your urea. Now with the two, uh, the two different types of research we're looking at here today, anything that surprised you? What has surprised me is that, um, is that the enhanced efficiency fertilizers 
you know, it's great to think of them in theory, and they've definitely been shown to, to preserve environmental health by reducing nitrogen loss, but that's maybe not necessarily translating automatically into higher yields or higher proteins or, or whatever yield parameter you're after. Um, but that also, in this test here, uh, there's a greenhouse gas component to it, so we're measuring cumulative nitrous oxide emissions throughout the growing season, and that nitrification inhibitors are reducing those emissions relative to urea by over 30%, which is in line with federal uh, set goals that are, are coming about for, for agriculture use and, and fertilizer use.